proud of uh, proud of our team. You know, to to go through spring the way we did, and to um, to work through a new offense, and I really feel improve every week, and um, really find that identity and and focus on our strengths and recognize the problems and talk honestly and openly about what they are and here's what we got to do to fix it. Um, I feel like that that's happened and that's still happening. Then I think defensively to um, take that next step as a defense, I think it's one thing to kind of return a bunch of guys. It's another to, um, you know, have a higher level and a higher standard and to have players hold other players accountable. And so I feel like all of that happened, you know. Uh, I thought today there was great effort today. I think, you know, I look back at um, just, I think, depth-wise going into it, whether it, whether it be just kind of the, the, um, uh, the normal wear and tear of a spring um, or just short, short change on position numbers to begin with. Uh, we, we're short on a few positions, and so to play – two teams uh, was probably a bit much and I've told the team as such and really appreciate their effort and fighting through. I, I thought that, you know, there's a couple, couple folks had 16 plays, you know, in a row, uh, whether it was this team or that team. And, you know, you could see the guys changing jerseys and that on the side and appreciate that, appreciate the, um, their effort to, to give us a spring game. Looking forward to what's, uh, what's next. Take some questions if you guys got some. Uh, Dave, uh, did you see what you wanted to see today? And uh, I guess probably to us, it probably looks like the defense is ahead of the offense. Is that to be expected right now? I think I think the defense is ahead right now. I feel like their communication and just their uh, their level of uh, of comfort in terms of what's being asked and uh, here's the how you um, communicate, line up. Um, make adjustments, playoff blocks, you name it. I think those things are probably a little bit more ingrained. Um, I think offensively we made, we made uh, a fair amount of uh, progress. And I can see it from the perspective of Saturdays. It's probably you don't see it, you know. And so I think for, for speaking for you all, uh, I imagine I probably shouldn't. I think the Saturdays... I think it's probably it's probably rough to see. You know, there's been a lot of a lot of good work on the Tuesday Thursdays. I think to, to get some of those Tuesday Thursday work and get it to Saturday, and everything that Saturday represents, McLean, crowds, stage, lights, all of that. I think is kind of where it's at, and I think it's a good stage to be at. It's a good phase to be at. I think and everybody understands it and everybody knows it, and uh, you know we got somewhere to to kind of hone in on it even more. Um, so I, I think you know, I think you're you're correct, uh, but I feel good about where we're all headed as a as a team. Does the offense know its identity now? I mean, do you, are you seeing that come to life? I guess. Yeah, I think just in the play selection, you could see it. Just uh, one one uh, wide zone run after another. The the uh, play action passes um, they were called after another. You know, the max protection two man routes that you could see, I think, you know, that's going to be us. You know, the more effective we can run the ball, the more secondary um, um, secondary players are going to be tied to the run, the more we get the one-on-one. -on -one. You know, you saw it uh, at times, and we're off on a throw here or, or off on a protection there. And so there's been times throughout the spring we've hit on those. And so to, um, to be the consistent, reliable offense we want, comes with running the football and really setting the stage for the play action pass. So I feel like you, I think we can see that. Um, I think the details we can hone in on better. You see continuity building on that offensive line, which I know last year, given injuries and everything, was you know just a, a, you know, a nightmare for you guys. You know, I, I'd say yes and no. I, I imagine there's probably not, I wouldn't think I'd come in here and have an answer like that to you. But, you know, I think um, yes in terms of, what that room is like right now with Coach Mateos and then with Coach Grimes kind of above it, um, I think there's great buy-in. I feel like the kids love um, love Eric and they love um, uh, Grimey and they like the direction of where everything's at. 
and they feel like um, they're being uh, developed and someone cares about them and um, they feel like, uh, you know, someone's got their back. So from that part of it, yes, you know, um, I think depth-wise, whether this is getting guys healthy, whether it's possible transfer portal, whether it's freshmen coming in, you know, um, it's been difficult to get uh, that a full yes because, you know, well, we've got these guys here that are down, these guys over there that are down, and, you know, hey, get over here and, you know, forget about the water, right, or get a water while you're doing your jersey change, and there's all of that. And so I think until that kind of dissipates, you know, we can get to that full yes, which is important for uh, where we're headed. Having multiple quarterbacks, uh, you know, there's a, obviously a competition going on right now. Uh, they all have different strengths. So looking at your wide receiving core, how does that maybe uh, benefit them just because maybe they have to get uh, adapt to different things on, on the fly as, in the spring game practice? No, I think that's, that's a really good question. That, that has come up uh, multiple times on uh, whether going into Saturdays or even, you know, Thursdays sometimes we work through, or a fair amount on Thursdays we work through uh, situational, um, you know, football situations specifically attacking. Uh, maybe it's a two-minute, maybe it's a backed up, maybe it's a uh, end-of-game scenario. And I think all of those things kind of tie in in terms of who the quarterback is, his style, and then um, receivers kind of buying into that. Hey, this thing's going to be, this play's going to be elongated, or hey, uh, so and so's in there. That ball's going to be out before your break, or um, you know, hey, the scramble and the throw is going to be to the right. The scramble is going to be to the left. Things like that. And so there's a fair amount of that. And I think sometimes that can cloud maybe an overall progress. But I think in the big picture, it um, it, it heightens an awareness of uh, you know um, everyone's everyone's job and how it you know everyone's one eleven kind of completes the thing. And so it's a good question. How do you assess the quarterback's play today? And are you prepared to name a starter? No, um, not yet. I thought, you know, it was it's probably uneven. I think there uh, it was good to see things kind of settle and really progress as the scrimmage went on. I think similar to what we've talked about in terms of the, you know, the Tuesday, Thursday, and taking that to Saturday, I think that's what you saw early on. Or at least that's what I felt. Um, and so, you know, coming off on the sideline, kind of settling down and uh, not trying to have to be anything other than what you already are, man. Just take away whatever, whatever is kind of going through our head or whatever we're making more of what it is. And I think once we got to that, we were able to be a little bit more consistent. And so I appreciate their, their ability to kind of work through that because um, uh, I know we got a good group and I'm excited about what's still to come. Or is the game to end it on that moment like that, that play with Zeno, because Jacob had a couple of tough throws. Mm -hmm. What was that like just to end it that way? It's good. I think it was probably needed, but I also felt like, you know, they were competing, so they earned it, you know. And so I think one of the things that I love about football is that nothing's given, right? And it's, um, you know, countless times I'm standing in the back during, a, during um, whether it be a seven-on-seven -seven or a team period, and, um, and this was most predominantly early in camp. And so quarterback would be out there uh, taking the snap. And I'd be standing with the other, um, you know, the other three guys. And um, a receiver over here would be open. It's supposed to be in progression. And, you know, we didn't see it. And over here, I'm hearing to my side, look at this guy. Look, you know. And I kind of go, man, it's, it's way easier over here you know, than it is over there. And so I, th I just think, like, you know that progression is is kind of where you start, you know, and then I think as it as it goes, just being comf uh, comfortable, knowing uh, per the question earlier of like who your receivers are, who that corner is, what that matchup is, what the shell is, what's the tilt, what's the coverage going to be, all of those things go into that throw. So it's pretty cool to see, especially after what you just mentioned. You know, the start of it. I think there's uh, there's a lot that's in, that goes into that. Saw a lot of Abram Smith today. What are the conversations like as far as you know him at running back and him at linebacker? How are y'all looking to balance that, if at all? He's been at running back for the last, um, really the last week, exclusively, and so um, you know he's challenging that room. I think he's 
you, you guys saw today just how physical he runs and uh, the track that he takes. And it's one, one foot in the ground, cut, vertical. And so I think he, he brings us a physicality and an edge, really, uh, that we're looking. You know, I think when, you, when you're a wide zone team and you're, you're pushing this way um, and, you know, it can, you can either reach an edge and turn, turn that corner or you can push an edge and stick your foot in the ground and get vertical, I think he, he gives you that ability. Um, that vertical piece, I think, is one right now that we're working to get ingrained with some of our other guys. And so I think he's a good illustration of kind of what we're looking for. But I think also um, he brings some toughness and some intangibles. So I think overall, you know, Baylor wins on that. We get better. Dave, it seems like your younger defensive players have really kind of stepped up and really embracing and you know, been running faster like they have picked up what you're asking them to do. What did you see from them this spring? I think that. I think, you know, one of the things that we've talked about, whether it was, it was a Trail Bernard, or Jalen Petrie, or um, you know Christian Morgan's so proud of Christian, and um, the develop his development as a leader. I I think you know that's probably not something that he'd raise his hand and volunteer for, but I think just life experience and his his maturity and everything has gotten to a point to where you know people are watching him and seeing how he how he handles this and that, and he's he's emerged. And I think just those guys, I mean, you know, so like when things are defined, right, and then you've got people that are managing, you know, these are things that are good, right, let's celebrate. These are things that are bad, let's convert it. Uh, but then you've got players that are modeling what we're saying, you know, and um, are continuing, are continual, continually in that good reel, right, and then um, holding others accountable, you can bring guys up. And I think that's occurred, you know. And so uh, we've got, on the defensive side, there's some uh, vast array of, uh, of characters. You guys just had one up here, you know. And so I think it's a, it's a, it's a really good mix. It's a good group. And uh, I think we've got a chance to be really good. We're, we're going to get some guys back, too, for, and during the summertime, uh, some really good ones back. And so uh, we're just getting started over there. You knew what you were getting with him. You mentioned uh, better than maybe you even remember. I mean, seems to be a lot more than just a space eater. Well, I think, you know, Apu is still um, working through things in terms of um, getting everything lined up in terms of where he wants to go, just as a person. Um, I, I love Apu and his energy. I love his smile. You know, I love uh, his heart. Um, his want to and his, his uh, connection to his team and his connection to his coaches and just uh, his empathy for others is so much higher than I remember. And so from, from that side of it, I think, you know, we're, we're winning pretty strong. And I think there's things on the field that obviously show up. But the personal stuff of just him growing, you know, there's, there's still some other growth we got to do. But I feel like we're, we're trending. Oh, he, had, he had talked about when he was up here uh, just the fact having the familiarity with some of the coaching staff members that in, in film room, you know, maybe he can, uh, you know, from a player's perspective, help them kind of transition to understand something. So what have you seen in that aspect of the familiarity and just maybe helping the defense, uh, you know, come maybe quicker? Yeah, I think, you know, Apu's one where, um, yeah, he'll just tell you, you know, so he'll <laughs> – He's not going to raise his hand necessarily, so he'll tell you. And I think you know he's always been um, been able to pick stuff up, right? And so um, you know I think he loves that zero nose, which uh, we we love it over here too. And so just that's a that's a great start of it. But I think you know he knows the structure of the defense and the run fits, and he knows protections. Um, and so he's been able to tutor a bunch of people that way, you know, just off on the sideline. I can see, hey, if you get that, that helmet turns to an ear hole and you need to work this other guy, and, you know, he's doing that. And I think, and I know our guys respect him because of, you know, uh, not only how he plays, but he carries himself in such a way um, that they see, the, they, they see kind of where he's headed. So, yeah, he, he's a good instructor. I'm sorry, Dave. Um, uh, so you're obviously a defensive guy, and I imagine that a big part of hiring Coach Grimes was, that's an offense I don't want to face. 
And have you kind of seen as, he, as he's gotten to install more and more of the offense, like, oh man, here comes another piece, and this is part of what it made so dangerous, and you know, this is what I brought him here for. It's a dangerous offense. Yeah, I think, you know, going back to that time um, when, when all that was, uh, was happening back in uh, December, I, you know, the thing that struck me about Grimes, is, number one, he's just a quality, quality person. Le legitimate uh, good guy, which um, you really, to be honest, can't have enough of those. And then um, is you know family guy, and I think um, is someone that can command a room, and is someone that believes in simplicity, right? That simple can be sophisticated, that you don't have to be uh, you know complex, that you don't have to have all these uh, bells and whistles and that. And so I think, you know, that would be aligned in terms of how I would think. And so that was a real strong connector there. And then um, once you got into it and you just saw the level of detail that he has, and um, you, could, you could feel from just talking to, uh, you know, a lot of, I have a lot of personal friends on that BYU staff, and they just raved about him just him as a person and what he was able to do with some of the issues that we're talking about now, you know, confidence in that. And so uh, it just felt like it was a perfect match, you know. And so I, I think it, the ability to have something in early on, right, and then continue to work on it, right. So even when, when there's bad days, even when there's good days, right, even when, hey, did you see this cut up from the Chiefs, from the Kansas City Chiefs? Hey, did you see this cut up from the Seattle Seahawks? And all of that, just to continue working on our stuff, right, and to work on the, the details of it. That's what you love, um, because our kids can relate to that. And when things are simple, we can go out and execute. Uh, four turnovers today. Is that something uh, that y'all have emphasized on the defensive side uh, during the spring? And then is it a red flag maybe on the other side of the offense? Yeah, so it's been emphasized. And so it's good to see. I think there's been, um, you know, this is probably one of the better days for all of that. And so it was good to see uh, defensively just the uh, the strip right couple picks and so the energy on that side was um, was pretty strong and and um, I thought throughout right throughout the um, the spring game it was it was it was at a real high level and so from that perspective man you really think um, you know this is a, this is a good start let's continue on this path I thought last year there was a lot of uh, good in that in uh, that general direction. I think offensively is probably our, our poorest day in terms of that. And I think that probably has some to do just with what we talked about in the beginning with uh, the green and gold and all of it. And so, um, you know, we're going to take that as a learning experience. I, I feel I look at the collective uh, all of spring. I thought they did a good job.